England versus Ireland. Hmm. It's coming home, boys, yeah, isn't it? It's coming home now, eh? Clive Woodward, eh? Yeah. Jeez. He said it's him. It, because they read the article that he yeah. he wrote to start fast. Like they the previous fast. weekend. <clears throat> they started very fast. They were physical. Jeez, guys. I mean, I, we, I mean, he wasn't part of our, my prediction. I was going Ireland all day. But, I mean, a lot of drama in the Six Nations this weekend. Eh? Like, yeah. that was proper game. But, I, I mean, credit to England. Yeah. In a way, they were, they were able to, um, to put Ireland under pressure defensively. So, again, their defensive system wasn't perfect. Yeah. But, I mean, it wasn't as if Ireland blew them apart as we thought would, would happen with... with, with yeah, James Lowe's first there. try, there's definitely sometimes still a disconnect. Yes, uh, Ollie yeah. Lawrence and, and Slade. Yeah, but what, it, what yeah. it felt to me was, you know, this weekend, and, and we've seen it a lot from the box as well, where you get beaten on the outside, mm. but your work rate and the guy's ability on the inside to work hard and scramble, eventually you make the tackle and you stop the defense. And, and they were doing that on the weekend. So that on the one side for me, and England's attack... It was amazing. <laughs> I was about to say the, exactly the, the same. Physical and fast. But like yeah. their, their, their first two tries came from kick receipts, long kicks. Yeah, James yeah. Lowe, long kick. Uh, Gibson Park, long kick. The first one was outstanding, like quick little hands, just straight running. Uh, Ollie Lawrence's one. And the second one, a couple of phases to right. And then the sweep, a little offload by, um, can't blank on his name now, flanker with a little scoop around the back to Itoje and Furbank finishing it. Underhill, sorry. Which was under, 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 He's got yeah. the scrum pad on now. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, confuses yeah. me every time. Yeah. And then again, Ben Ull. Ben, <laughs> scrum pad. <laughs> scrum pad. And then Ben Ull. Again. What a game. Proper. Huge yeah. game. What a game. That was next level. But <clears throat> Sorry, before we speak about yeah. him, because I think he deserves more than just a quick mention. Um, but Borthwick's uh, selections, you know, going with Furbank, mm. even even last week or the previous game Please against Scotland, you know, and and Furbank was really good. I mean, Freddie Stewart's been very good for England. Furbank can create from the back, but he can create. So yeah. it's it's a totally different mindset. So credit to to them for for their selections. Ben, oh, I don't okay. know. Did you listen to his post match? No. Uh, yeah. About all yeah, the, what, the, the, what the media have been saying. Yeah, exactly. Some... Saying that we're the, we're the yeah, worst, worst team ever. And, uh, and he, was just, he was quite emotional about um, you know, what, they were, what they were playing for. Um, you know, Jamie George, to me, is also kind of a, a captain that brings the... the I mean, He's a good know, guy. Very yeah, He's a good guy. For, People yeah, like him. You man. want to play for him. His mother passing away. And, and, sure. and that was kind of instrumental also yeah. in, in them having more meaning in the game. Um, and then saying, and it's true so many times, you don't get the results, but you don't see what a team does in the background. Yeah. You don't see half of the work that they put in during the week. And he was just kind of emphasizing that. And, and again, you know, we sit here, we give, we make comments, you, but, you know, guys, take it, yeah, take it personally. And, and, I th and, and that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, and you could see they took it personally in some of the comments that's been made about the team, and, and they certainly showed up on the day. But, John, in saying that, though, we've seen <coughs> Springbok teams there. You know, that one big Tri-Nations game, that, you know, South African team, you know, that lose, do badly. But they always, this was years ago, where they always had that one big performance yeah. at home when the yeah. media's against you. Everybody says how crappy you are, yeah. et cetera. We've all, you've all, we've all you, seen You come up against the All Blacks and all of a sudden you turn them over. All of a sudden you turn them over. No yeah. one expects that. Media as motivation. Is that the right thing? Or was this the, the, the change shift, the, the, a gear shift in England? from conservative to attacking? Because it's two different ways. You know, you can use the media won't motivate you every yeah. single weekend. No, uh, motivation by virtue of media is not sustainable. Yeah. That, that can get nah. you up, you know, once, twice maybe in a, in a season. But it, that's not something we, that, that you build confidence from. Um, it's not something that you can apply every single weekend because, uh, you, you know, you just don't win, win competitions like that. Yeah. And also, let, let's just be frank, it's not, it's not as if Ireland is not suddenly a bad team and uh, England is the world champions. You know, it's, yeah. it's one game. And, and, and I think it's important to, um, to look at it, in, to have perspective in yeah. terms of the performance. It was a good performance on the day, better than Ireland on the day. But I mean, there's still, winners. Yeah, but like, still a long way to go. Yeah. Em emotion take goes a long way, but emotion without the detail and the skill set yeah, and the yeah. preparation and actually knowing it's what you're doing emotion. on the field, is, it's, it, you run out of it, the emotion part. So you mm. can be competitive for a set amount of time or maybe once every you know, six weeks it comes through for you. 
you know, this England side played beautiful rugby. I think if you're the Irish team, the thing that you will worry about is like you see it with Leinster, you see it in World Cup quarterfinals. I mean, this was a big game regarding the Grand Slam. You know, how many times they come up short? It's only just, but they come up short in the, in the, big, big, ones. In the big games. The ones that count. And the ones that count are the ones you remember the most. I mean, they're a fantastic side. And all of us pitch up here, we want to see Leinster and Ireland play the way they do. But there is definitely something to be said in the big games for being put under the pump, put under the pressure. Can they respond to that? You know, do they have the skills that are the tools or the resilience sometimes to win ugly? And I think they do. It's just unfortunately at the moment they're losing games <coughs> that has got a big effect on their trophy cabinet. What surprised me about England was the fact that even though they made mistakes towards the end, they were able to to get it over the line. But that last attacking set was next level. Eh? It was fantastic. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's that's maybe the answer is that you you you're sometimes so forced to go conservative. Yeah. Okay, we wonder we want to close the game now and go conservative where the space sometimes is where you where you need to go yeah. and take it wide so and just have the freedom to have a go. Yeah. But far easier said than that. Yeah, looking at Ireland now, is is a performance like this is what's holding them back from being a great team scholar. Because this Irish team has, you know, you talk about the win in New Zealand. That will be the yeah. first Irish team to ever do that. I mean, you go back to um, when Joe Schmidt came here with, with the Irish team yeah, and they, they almost won the series in South Africa. 2016. This we've seen before from the Irish team. You mentioned it now with Leinster. Yeah. This is, is this what's holding them back? I think the worry in all these games, they've got a similar trend. Yeah. Most of these games. I think the one that stands out, obviously, is when La Rochelle play Leinster. Yeah. Um, Similar, series against series against, uh, against it, yeah. exactly it's a similar they sort of get suff suffocated and they can't play their style and they get almost agitated with doing it and then they've got to sit back in a bit more of a conservative way of playing look the things that normally stand out from the Irish side is their physicality for me is the most underrated part of their game but you definitely see when a side basically fronts up and makes it hard for them to play break down gets tough you know, they definitely do have errors in them, wow. uncharacteristic errors, and, and they don't play on their terms, where they, they then have to play a bit more conservative, they don't boss the ball, it becomes yeah. more of a, a street fight, and that's where you want them to do that. I think, you know, the box have got the tools to do that to them. You sort of saw it last year in Paris in that, at that pool game. Yes, ultimately we came up short, but like, you know, Dropped the physicality, down. especially in the beginning from the box was next level. Um, and, and towards the end of it, we obviously had a, a foothold in the game, deep 22 entry, you know, the ball, was it out, wasn't out, it got blown, we lost by two points or whatever. I think we've got the ability to do that again to them, but, you know, you're right, Shimmy, they, they lose games which you think they enter as favourites, and it, it means a lot, you know, it's, yeah. as I mentioned, they're losing games that is costing them trophies or titles, and, and, and that's a worry for them.